This is the second part of a level 2 functional skills math paper from Open Awards. In this part you can use a calculator. Task 2. Khalid wants to buy a two-bedroom house no further than 0.6 miles from the station. Khalid has saved a deposit of £4,875. He can afford a mortgage of 3.5 times his earnings, which is £28,145 per annum. The scatter graph shows information about the price and distance from the station of recent two-bedroom house sales in the area. Can Khalid afford to buy a two-bedroom house within 0.6 miles of the station? Give a reason for your answer. Okay. So, from the information that we've been given, we know that he can afford a mortgage of 3.5 times his earnings. So 3.5 times 28,145, that's what we're going to do. That gives us 98,507.5. We also know that he saved a deposit of 4,875, so we're going to add that to the 98,507.5. which gives us 103,382.5. So that's the amount that he can afford. Now we're looking for two bedroom houses within 0 0.6 miles of the station. Distance in the scatter diagram seems to be given in kilometers, so we're going to need to convert that into miles. So we're looking for 0 0.6 miles. What's that in? kilometers. To get from 1 to 0 0.6 we've multiplied by 0 0.6 so we'll do the same on the other side. So 1.6 times 0 0.6 gives us 0 0.96 kilometers. So we're going to look for 0 0.6 kilometers but we need to draw a line of best fit first. So drawing a line where the points on both sides have more or less an equal distance from it. Obviously this isn't perfect but it gives you an idea. So we're looking for 0 0.96 kilometers which is very close to one kilometer really. So that's roughly between 104,000 and 106,000. So that would make 105,000. Now let's have a look. Can he afford 105,000? That's less, 103,382 pounds and 50 pence. So we're going to say no
So no, the house costs 105,000 while he only has 103,382 pounds and 50 pence. So we've given the reason. Find the mode in the following set of numbers. So we've got 8, 8.5, 8, 7, 11, 23, 9, 11, 7.5, 11, 7. Write your answer in the box. So the mode is the most common number, the one that recurs most. So are there any numbers that repeat themselves? We've got 8 twice. We've got 11, 1, 2, 3 times. We've got 7 twice, so 11, 3 times, that's most. So we're going to write 11 as the answer. Calculate the median of the following set of numbers. Show your calculations and our workings out here. So to work out the median of these numbers, we're going to put them in order and then find the middle number or numbers. So we can start from the smallest to the largest and that looks like 9 is the smallest so I'm going to write it here and then we have 9.5 and then we have 10 10.5 11, we have 12, we have 15 and 23. Crossing the numbers out now on each side, we get two of them right in the middle. So 10.5 and 11. Adding these together and dividing the answer by 2 gives us 10.75. So that's the median and the final answer for this question. Amy wants to catch the 10-12am train from Darlington to Chesterfield. She wants to allow 10 minutes to buy a ticket and get to the platform. She lives 2 miles from the station and knows that she can walk at 3 miles per hour. At what time should she leave home? Show your calculations and our workings out in the space below. So she lives 2 miles from the station and she knows that she can walk at 3 miles per hour. So if she can do three miles in one hour, how long would it take her to do just two miles? So three divided by two gives us 1.5. So three divided by 1.5 gives us two as well. So one hour, if we divide by 1.5, we can actually do 60 minutes instead of one hour. So 60 divided by 1.5 gives us 40 minutes. So 40 minutes to walk to the station and then 10 minutes to buy a ticket. That is 50 minutes in total and that is 10 12 a.m. when the train leaves so you're going to need to work backwards so to go to 10 a.m. we're going to take away 12 minutes so Borrowing 1 from the 5, 10 take away 2 gives us 8, 4 take away 1 
gives us 3, so 38 minutes before 10 a.m. So what is that? 60, take away 38. That is 2. 5, take away 3, gives us 2. So that is 9.22. And that would be in the morning, so a.m. So 9.22 a.m. Tom is given £8,500 to go towards the deposit to buy his first house. Tom sees these two savings accounts. Money saver account, 1.75% per year, to be added at the end of each year. Then we have bonus saver account, save for three years and receive a single bonus of 5.25%. Tom puts his money in the money saver account. How much more money will Tom have after three years compared to the bonus saver account? So through the money saver account, we've got the £8,500 and we've got 1.75% per year. It says to be added at the end of each year. So that's going to be 1.75% of the final amount for the previous year. So compound interest in other words. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the compound interest formula. So the original amount we invest in, which is 8,500 times 1.0175 because 1.75% We'd write it as a decimal, 0 0.0175. So just as if this was with a pound sign in front, this would be representing the 10 pence coins, this would be representing the 1 pence. So same 1 pence, 1%. 1 so 1.0175. 75% and that's to the power of 3 because this is over 3 years so using a calculator we get 8954.1049 and so on but then again this is money so we're going to have to round this to two decimal places so looking at the digit on the right that's a four so we're going to round down so this is going to remain as a zero so eight thousand nine hundred and fifty four pounds and ten pence so this is with the money saver account now bonus saver account we've got save for three years and receive a single bonus of 5.25 percent so we're going to work out 5.25 percent of 8500 so that is 5.25 out of 100 times 8500 which gives us 446.25 so adding that on top of 8,500 gives us 8,946.25. So now we need to work out the difference because the question is how much more money will he save? So we've got the 8954.10 and the 8946.25 so 
8954.10, take away 8946.25, gives us £7.85 pence difference. Task 3, question 11. The formula below is used to calculate the percentage fuel saving when driving at reduced speed compared to higher speed. So we've got F is equal to 100 times A minus B divided by B all squared. So we've got F, meaning percentage fuel savings, A, original average speed and b reduced average speed calculate f when the speed is reduced from 60 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour show your calculations and or workings out below so let's just replace them with values so we've got f is equal to 100 times so a the original average speed that is 60 miles per hour and b is the reduced average speed which is 50 miles per hour so take away 50 all divided by b which is again the reduced average speed and that's 50 in our case and that is squared so we need to follow bit mass and do the brackets first so 100 times 60 take away 50 that is 10 divided by 50 and that's squared so we continue 100 times 10 divided by 50 that is 0 0.2 so that's squared now so the next step will be to square 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 so 100 times 0 0.04 which is equal to 4 Rahima is concerned about the environment and is looking for ways to be more eco-friendly Rahima is researching the use of solar panels for her house. She has found some information on the total number of sun hours per month where she lives for 2016 and 2017. So we've got them given by month. Rahima thinks the total number of sun hours was higher in December 2017 than in December 2016. Is she correct? Show your calculations and the workings out here. So we're looking at December. We've got December 2016, that is 21. December 2017, we're not given it. So we're going to need to work it out. What we are given here, though, is the average sun hours per month in 2017. Got mean 94.5. So to work out the mean, you add all of the numbers together the number of sun hours and then divide by how many there are to get that so if we add 47 61 119 128 214 108 144 126 94, 56, 6, and this number that is missing, that will give us the total in here. Then that total divided by the 12 months gives us 94.5. Now, given that we don't know that total, we're going to have to do the inverse. So 94.5 times 12 it should give us the total 
and that is 1134. Now that's the total including December 2017. To work out December 2017 we're going to take away the total for all the other months to work it out. So this is 1103. So 1134 take away 1103 gives us 31. So Rahima thinks that the total number of sun hours was higher in December 2017 than in December 2016. Comparing them, yeah, that's 31 and this is 21. So is she correct? Yes, she is. It's 10 more. Which year had the greatest range of sun hours? Show your calculations here. So range, we're looking to take away the smallest from the highest value. So in 2016, which one is the smallest value? That is 21. And the highest value, that is 206. So 206, take away 21. gives us 185. Now looking at 2017, what is the lowest value? Seems to be 6 and the highest 214. So 214 take away 6. gives us 208. So this is the greatest number, that means the greatest range, and that was for 2017. To generate the maximum amount of electricity, a solar panel needs to face south and have a tilt angle of 30 degrees. This will generate a maximum of 1.225 kilowatt hours of electricity for each hour of sunshine. In June, there were 108 hours of sunshine. Rahima's roof faces southwest and has a tilt angle of 50 degrees. To find out how much electricity her solar panel will produce, she needs to divide the maximum electricity that could be generated by a factor given in the table below. Rahima usually pays 0 0.1 for three pounds per kilowatt hour of electricity. How much would the electricity generated in June cost if she had to pay for it? Show your calculations and are working out here. So what we know is that Rahima's roof faces southwest and has a tilt angle of 50 degrees. So tilt angle that is 50 facing southwest, so that is 1.09, the number that we after. So, to find out how much electricity her solar panel will produce, she needs to divide the maximum electricity that could be generated by a factor given in the table below. That factor is 1.09. The maximum electricity is 1.225, so we're going to do 1.225 divided by the factor which is 1.09, and that gives us 1.1238532113211. So that's how much it will generate, and that is for each hour of sunshine. And there were 108 hours of sunshine. So we're going to multiply this by 108. So 108 times 1.12385 1.12385 1.12385 
3, 2, 1, 1, which gives us 121.3761467888. So that's how many kilowatt hours in total. We've got the price here being 0.143 pounds. So I'm going to do 0 0.143 times 121.376146788 to get the total. And that gives us 17.356788. And as we input pounds, the answer will be in pounds. So 17 pounds and looking at that means we're going to round up. So this will become a six. So 17 pounds and 36 pence. This is how much you'd pay in June if you had to pay for it. So 17 pounds and 36 pence pence is the final answer. Rahima finds that she can be more environmentally friendly by collecting rainwater from drain pipe so she can use it to water her garden. Rahima buys a cylindrical container that is 80 centimeters in diameter and one meter high. Rahima thinks the container will hold at least 100 gallons of water. Is she correct? We've got to use pi equals 3.14 and one cubic meter is equal to 219.97 gallons. Show your calculations and our workings out here. So the first thing would be to work out the volume of the container. So what we're given is that it's got a diameter of 80 centimeters and it's one meter high. So we know that to work out the volume of the cylinder we need to do pi r squared times height so area of the base times the height what we know is that the radius is 40 centimeters so half of the diameter we know that pi is 3.14 Four, so times the radius which is 40 that will need to be squared times the height which is one meter okay so one meter that's a different unit from the centimeters we input for the radius so we could convert this into 100 centimeters but let's have a look at what we need as the answer we need to then work with cubic meters so what we need to do is to convert the 40 centimeters into meters instead so there are 100 centimeters in one meter so 40 centimeters will be 0 0.4 so you could also divide 40 by 100. So I'm just going to put 0 0.40 in there, which is the same as 0 0.4 times the height. Again, that's given in meters, so we don't need to change it. So I'm just going to do times 1 in there. So now you can input this into the calculator. Or you could break it down into further steps so 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 1 and that gives us 0 
that is cubic meters the volume of the cylinder so we've got to work this out in gallons now so one cubic meter is equal to 219.97 gallons what about 0 0.5024 cubic meters how many gallons will that be so to get from 1 to 0 0.5024 we've multiplied by 0 0.5024 We'll do the same on the other side so times 0 0.5024 that gives us 110.512928 gallons and the question was Rahima thinks the container will hold at least 100 gallons of water is she correct Yes, because this is more than 100. So, yes, it will hold more than 100 gallons. Task 4, question 13. On the grid, mark the point 4, 2. So the x coordinate is 4. So looking at the x axis, we'll stop at 4. And then we go up 2. So that's 2 there. Give 144 as a fraction of 240 in its simplest form. Show your calculations and all workings out here. So we've got 144 out of 240. Now, looking at these two numbers, we can divide both of them by 12. But if you're not sure about this, you could just half them. So I could divide both numbers by 2. So half of 144, that is 72, and half of 240, that is 120. Can I divide these numbers by 2 again? Yes, I can. So if I divide 72 by 2, it gives me 36. And if I divide 120 by 2, it's going to give me 60. I can go on further. So dividing 36 by 2 gives me 18. Dividing 60 by 2 gives me 30. Can I divide by 2 again? Yes, I can. And that gives me 9. And 30 divided by 2 gives me 15. Can I divide by 2 and get a whole number now? No, I can't. But I can divide by 3. So divide by 3 gives me 30. 3 divided by 3 gives me 5. Can I go any further? Can I divide both numbers by 3 or by 5? No, I can't. So I've got to the simplest form now. So 3 fifths is the final answer. Sarah helps to organise a Family Fun Day charity event each year. Last year, 120 people attended the event, each paying a £2.50 entry fee. It cost £175 to hire the village hall for the event and a further £85 for prizes. How much profit did Sarah make for charity? Show your calculations and the workings out here. So, we've got... 
the village hall higher. That was £175. And the £85 for the prizes. So adding these two together will give us the cost. So Five and five is ten, so zero down and one is carried over. Eight and seven is fifteen, and the one we had, that is sixteen. So six down and one carried over. One and one is two, so two hundred and sixty pounds are the costs. In terms of the entry fee, so that was two pounds fifty, and we've got one hundred and twenty people. So one hundred and twenty times two pound fifty gives us three hundred so that made three hundred pounds the entry fees we don't know what percentage of money taken that represented but we can work it out how can you do that? We know the percentage for Cake Stall, Bouncy Castle, Tombola and Will of Future. So if we add these together, including this, that should make 100%. So let's just add 19, 32, 9 and 15. And that is 75%. So to make in total 100%, we need to put here 25%, because 25 and 75 makes 100. So the entry fees made for 25%. So what will have been the total amount? If that was 25%, like this, a quarter, and that was 300, we'd have 300 over here as well, and 300 here as well, and 300 here as well. So in total, that would be £1,200. So... If we take away the costs, which were £260, that gives us 0 take away 0 is 0, 0 take away 6 means we've got to borrow 1 here, so this becomes a 10, 10 take away 6 is 4, 1 take away 2 means we've got to borrow, so this becomes 11, this becomes 0, so 11 take away 2 gives us 9, 0 take away 0 is 0. By the way, you could just check using a calculator or do all these calculations with a calculator here, because it's the calculator part of the paper. But that gives us now a difference of £940, so that's the profit that she made for charity. So £940 is the final answer for this question. Sarah bakes 15 identical cakes for the charity event. Each cake is circular with a radius of 80 millimeters. She plans to decorate each cake with a piece of ribbon around its edge. She wants to buy an extra 12.5% to allow for overlap. She can only buy a ribbon in full meters, costing £4.95 per meter. How much will she spend on ribbon? Use pi equals 3.14. Show your calculations and our working is out here. So let's work out how much ribbon is needed for one cake. So as it's going to go around, it means we need to work out the circumference of the circle. So we've got the radius being 80 millimeters and the cost is given per meter. So I'd like to work with meters here as well to do the calculations in meters. So 80 millimetres, there are 10 millimetres in one centimetre, so that will be 80 millimetres will be equal to 
eight centimeters and in one meter there are 100 centimeters so eight centimeters that will be eight divided by a hundred which is 0 0.08 meters to work out the circumference we do 2 pi r so 2 lots of pi that is 3.14 times the radius which is 0 0.08 so doing this in the calculator gives us 0 0.5024 four meters so that is for one cake there are 15 identical cakes so i'm going to multiply this by 15 so 15 times 0 0.5024 that gives us 7.536 meters now we need to add to that 12.5 percent extra so 12.5 percent that is 12.5 out of 100 of the amount which is 7.536 so in the calculator 12.5 divided by 100 times 7.536 gives us 0 0.942 meters so that's the 12 percent which we're going to need to add on top of the 7.536 meters. So 2 and 6, that is 8. 4 and 3, 7. 9 and 5, 14. So 8.478. So that's how much ribbon is needed. But what we are told is that she can only buy a ribbon in full meters costing £4.95 pence per metre. So we're going to say 9 metres are needed. So 9 times the cost per metre, which was 4 95 gives us £44.55 pence. Don't forget here, you can't round this to 8, despite the 4 in here, because you always need to buy more, you can't buy less. So that's why the 9. Final answer, £44.55. At the charity event, there is a wheel of future game for the boys and girls. To win, you need to spin the dial and land on a win segment. 15 girls and 15 boys are each having a turn on the game today. What is the probability that a child who plays is a girl and that she wins a prize? So we've got to combine the probability that it is a girl with the probability that she wins a prize. So... There are 15 girls and 15 boys, so that's 50-50. So probability of the child being a girl, that is 0 0.5 or a half or 50%. Now, that means we've got to multiply by the probability that she wins the game. So let's have a look. What's the probability of winning the game? There are 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 probability of winning the game. So 4 twelves, that is the same as saying 1 third, so dividing both by 4. So 1 third so if we do 0 0.5 times a third, don't forget that one third is 1 divided by 3. So 0 0.5 times 1 divided by 3 
that gives us 0 0.1666 so the 6 is recurring so I'm gonna rewrite this as 0 0.167 so rounding this to three decimal places and I can write that here 0 0.167 and this is the end of the paper.